Hi, my name is Joseph Ally. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about specific people manifestations versus general manifestations with a specific person romantically. The reason for this video is I first and foremost am testing out a new recording format so that I can record on the fly. So if you'll notice, I've got a different background here. The reason for this is I feel if I'm able to record anywhere and just simply use a background of my choice, I will be providing more content, which will be good for you and good for me to get information out to the world. So that is why you will see that. Um, other than that, this topic, as far as specific people, obviously is big stuff. Now, who here has come to this video to manifest anything else aside from a specific person. There will be many here, but most and the majority of people here either have gotten into manifestation because of this or have heard this topic. Now, manifesting a specific person can use a lot of different power related to controlling your mind, related to uh, managing your self-concept and your beliefs. And oftentimes many people struggle, but with manifesting a specific person, you will learn so much about yourself and the art and skill and craft of manifestation that it is a great avenue to get into when it comes to manifestation, because with that, you can absolutely master this craft. Before we begin, absolutely hit that like button. It'll do something to the algorithm so that those who normally wouldn't be able to see this video will be able to see this video. Hit the subscribe button if you want broken down systematic methods on how to manifest anything that you want in a predictable manner. And that's what I do. I break down difficult to understand topics or topics that are broadly misunderstood by the manifestation community. Through my career, I have um, manifested and tested hundreds of thousands of different manifestations. I have coached manifestation coaches. Many of those who are on the platform today have worked with me in many ways to um, essentially sharpen skills. And a lot of people have learned a great deal from these implementations, these systematic approaches, the breakdown of the metaphysical interpretation of scripture um, by means similar to Neville Goddard, and so with that said, if you are interested in the breakdowns of how to manifest whatever you want, and I mean whatever you want, and no matter who you are, what skill level, hit the subscribe button and then the bell icon so you can stay informed. Also, I have just relocated to London. I just bought a house in New Jersey, but have manifested a person, a relationship, and her and I are going to be producing content together. We will collaborate together and explain how we manifested each other. So absolutely stay tuned. Um, we there are Many people have had fun guessing who it is, have had fun figuring it out. Um, but if you are interested in how, and this is absolutely miraculous, the unfolding of our manifestations. So if you want the breakdowns, if you want the how, if you want to understand the, and that's what this video is going to delve into a little bit, which is the breakdown of manifesting a person the specific way versus the general way and the benefits of each and when to use which. So anyway, enough about that. Let us get into this. So what is manifesting a specific person? You've heard this topic before. I know you have. One of my videos couple of them have over half a million views. Some of these are a couple of years old where I delve into the systematic breakdowns of how to manifest a specific person by delving into very, very in-depth on Neville Goddard's techniques. Now, I it's funny because my girlfriend and I recently have talked about how it seems anyone who's ever manifested something now thinks that they have the ability and the um, wherewithal to start their own channel, their own TikTok, their own whatever. And But everything speaks for itself. 
But nevertheless, oftentimes this information gets confusing. There's a lot of contradictory, conflicting information, which is why I came into the manifestation community to begin with. When I started teaching, I never was on YouTube before. I didn't even know, manif I don't even think there was really that many manifestation coaches out there. Everything that I had learned was through the Bible, was through my understanding of mathematics and quantum physics, probability and analyzing reality using systematic techniques, right? I have that background in physics, in math, and in also scripture. I was trained in scripture and the metaphysical interpretation of scripture. I was involved in what many would consider to be a cult. And although that was um, representing some dark periods in my life, I had learned so much. I've received many mystical experiences, many which I was able to compare down the road. It took about a decade to figure out that Neville Goddard had experienced the same ones as I did. And I discovered, never, n discovered Neville after this. But suffice it to say, the reason I give you this information is because I want to give you the foundation and the breakdown as to why this information is very important to find valid sources and why you should listen to me. Now, specific people is a topic that many have considered taboo. And in fact, many manifestation coaches, I'm talking about before I became a YouTuber, talk about how you shouldn't and you cannot manifest a person. But this is absolutely false. Anything and everything in this world has been manifested. And in our experience, we have brought it in. We have created this reality with our imagination, our mind, and the subconscious mind. These things together have been observed by our awareness, which is God, the God of Scripture. In Exodus 12, God says his name is I Am. And I Am, when you tell somebody who you are, the structure of the sentence that you will use is always some form of the phrase, I am. And this is whether you're talking about your name, talking about who you are, what you are, how you are, whatever the case is, you're always, or if you're describing someone else, you are. It's always a tense of the phrase, I am. And that phrase, I am, is referring to the God of Scripture. And if there's any confusion, as modern religion does not like to say that we are God, although it says it very clearly and explicitly in Scripture, even more so than saying his name is I am, it says, he says his name is I am, and then he explicitly says that is his name throughout all generations. I remember when I went to Catholic school, it was taught that miracles only existed at the time of Christ. It was very clear there. However, that contradictory statement is in Exodus that says that's his name throughout all generations. And then it goes to say in Psalms that you are gods. You are children of the Most High, which means the Most High God. That means you are gods. And that same word, gods, is Elohim, which is used to describe the I am in Exodus. There are other definitions of the phrase I am in Exodus, meaning behind the symbolic interpretation in Hebrew is also Jehovah or yad heh vav -Hey, but suffice it to say, you are gods. And then many people will still say, yes, but uh, they're meaning something else. In the New Testament, Christ even refers to that quote. It is, isn't it said that you are gods? So the point of this is to say that you as a God are the one of, so the word Elohim, which is referred to or used to describe the phrase I am or the self of man or God is actually plural. It is one God made up of many. Now there is still only one God. We are that one God. That God is named consciousness or I am. But the Bible behind the scenes is talking about the process of the infinite God becoming man. And so in Exodus, there's actually, if you use, if in Exodus 12, there are a number of sentences and statements that God and Moses are using back and forth. But behind there, the interpretation, it's giving a story. And the story is, it's giving tenses of the phrase Elohim, then it goes to a different tense of Elohim, then it goes to Jehovah. And so the point is, is that it goes from God made up of many 
to an individualized concept of God, which is our true self, which is the I am. And that I am is what Neville Goddard refers to as the self of man or the imagination. So anyway, the point in saying this is that we all have that power of God. We are God. We do not have a limited amount of the power of God. Even though it is one God made up of many, that is not to say that we have some power and someone else has other power. No, you cannot limit God. You are the God, the all-powerful God. Now, with that said, as God, you can create and change anything in this world. Systematically tested, and those of you who have systematically put this stuff to the test, please comment below. It helps those who are still questioning this. If you give them evidence, give them the stories, they will know that this is all legitimate, that this stuff has been put to the test systematically thousands of times, and the results come. It's a predictable method of how to get the results. But anyway, the point is, is that which you hold within the imagination becomes impressed upon the subconscious, and then the subconscious intervenes or, or intercedes for you with awareness, which is God or the I am, and then I am, which is God, is connected to and the core of every person, every living thing, and it's the substance of anything that exists in this world. Well, therefore, the fact that that is your true self and you are God, you can instruct that God to take form of anything that you wish to experience. And in plain English, that means whatever you imagine, God takes on the form of that in this world. He will rearrange the structure of himself and he will give you that thing which you have imagined. So when you imagine someone is a certain way, a bridge of incidents unfolds in a way that is independent of your understanding, right? God's understanding is past finding out. You should not even try to do this. You should not even try to figure out how it's going to happen. But the point is, is whatever it is that you imagine, as long as you do it in a way that is in first person perspective and after the end, you will convert reality. You will force God to conform to that. So God is not just an entity or an aspect or a portion of our self. Yes, that is our true self, but that is also all of our self. And in fact, the fact that everything that we experience, we are aware of means everything is within our awareness. And if our awareness is God, that means everything is God. And if we are God and we have the power to control and modify this world by means of our manifestations, or sorry, by means of um, manifesting through impressing the subconscious mind with our imagination, all we have to do is imagine that thing, that person, that experience that we wish to experience, and God takes on the form of that. So simply put, you want to manifest a person, you imagine that you are married to that person, not before, right? Or even an anniversary after the fact. I talked about this in my prior video, but if you imagine before the end, the DNA of the seed that you construct is only that to the extent to that you have imagined, nothing after. The same as an apple tree doesn't grow to an apple tree and then some epic apple orange tree or a human doesn't grow into a human and then an android and then an alien it goes to a human the same thing as an imaginal act you construct that within the mind's eye the end result in first person perspective that is the dna of the seed that you are creating you're conditioning it when you're imagining it when you stop imagining it you drop the seed into the ground and then it grows into the image of that which you've imagined in other words god takes on the form god meaning everything in this experience uses its own power, its own intelligence, its own wisdom to construct itself or to mold itself or condition itself into the image of the thing that you've imagined. So you imagine yourself married to a person. You never have to understand how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, why it's going to happen. All of that is for God to understand, meaning your mind is not God. Your consciousness is God. Right? So that is past finding out. Why is it past finding out? Because it's past the mind. It's beyond the mind, which means literally it's past finding out. Literally. So that's a verse is that um, he's past finding out. His ways, are, his ways are greater than our ways. They're past finding out. So it's um, another way of saying don't try to figure it out because it's literally impossible. You will actually get in the way if you try to figure it out. Anyway, point being is construct the image in your mind's eye. 
right? After the end in first person perspective. Again, in the last video that I recorded, I talk about the replicating factor of the awareness, meaning that which you hold within the mind, awareness shines on it, meaning think now of an apple. Now, the fact that you can think of what you're imagining is the fact that there's your thought and then a consciousness aware of the thought. So you are the consciousness that is aware of the mind. That consciousness is what becomes aware of that imaginal act. And that consciousness gets impressed if you hold it there and fix it there within the imagination. Your awareness experiences it. It gets saturated with it. It gets impressed by it. And then by means of awareness itself has all infinite power, infinite wisdom, infinite knowledge, infinite everything it will conform to that image, meaning a master plan will be constructed through the infinite power of awareness and then connected to everyone or because it's the source of everyone, it can form or modify the contents therein, meaning considering a person is made up of God, the mind is made up of God, thoughts are made up of God, feelings are made up of God. It can take on the form of things that will, in other words, convince or compel a person to perform the actions that will ultimately get you to where you want to go. That is the amazing process by which manifestations take hold. In a simple way, you imagine, you hold that in your mind, your awareness, meaning God, then takes on the form of that thing. You don't have to worry about anything else. You're not convincing it how to do it. You're not, you're, there's no way you could ever figure out how to activate or utilize rather control this power other than the amazing way you can test and prove that your imagination creates reality. So in other words, what you're doing is you're constructing an end result based upon your desires and the world will conform to it. Now, that is the first part. That is manifesting a specific person. That is imagining the end, meaning marriage with this person or a year anniversary, 10 year anniversary, impressing that upon your subconscious and watching it unfold in the world. The problem that people often experience is when there's a history or a past or we are dealing with our own fears, insecurities, doubts, etc. The problem is, is when we do that, when we have these problems and we begin to attempt to manifest a specific person, especially when there's a past or a history, oftentimes our own concepts, our own fears, our own doubts, our own insecurities continuously manifest and are battling with the concepts that we're holding in our mind. We imagine being married to a person but our consciousness, meaning our, I'm sorry, our belief systems are saying you're not worthy. This person's going to leave you. They're going to cheat on you. They don't love you. They love someone else. They're with this other person that you're so afraid that they're going to be with them. You're never going to be first. So then what happens? What happens is, is you are attempting to supersede or overcome this slew of beliefs and assumptions that are battling with this singular imaginal act. And oftentimes it causes anxiety, fears, doubts, insecurities, jealousy, rage, anger, sadness, despair. All of these things that are almost insurmountable, especially if you don't have any prior training in psychology or if you have a therapist of, of your own. So from that point of view, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of ways that you can essentially work on yourself to master your own pers persona, do inner work, right? Work on the shadow, work on your self-concept, work on your assumptions, work on your, you know, uh, uh, inner child. These certain things that oftentimes without our understanding are have taken a hold within us. They are so far back within the memory that we don't even remember the experiences that cause us to have these assumptions and beliefs. Many of them even happen before we're capable of having a full memory. And so this becomes a difficult process to manifest a person when it doesn't happen instantaneously or doesn't happen naturally or we're not having a lot of problems or insecurities related to it, right? Then that'll just happen. But when we do or when we're feeling these fears, doubts, insecurities, jealousies, etc., there oftentimes needs to be, these need to be combated or, or worked along with through either some sort of, you know, concept work, beliefs, work on our inner child, work on our memories, use revision, essentially to reverse engineer the structure of this reality, finding the commonalities between all of the events, which there are always patterns in our experiences. We have to target those, find the pattern, realize that those patterns are beliefs that are causing the patterns, then go ahead and remove those beliefs or change them into something else, which ultimately will uproot those beliefs 
and we'll remove that problem. But we have to use, now that's a huge <laughs> order, a tall order, and we don't have to do it instantaneously, but there's a process that we can do, which is throughout my channel, and I'll talk about this in the upcoming future, but that we can go through to systematically and laser focus, target these beliefs, target these commonalities between these experiences, such as people always leave me, I'm always second, I'll never get what I want, I'm always gonna be stuck with these problems. These sort of assumptions that we assume to be true about reality actually become true and cause problems that are going to interfere with likely or um, get in the way of the bridge of incidents or they will make up our bridge of incidents to cause us pain that will prevent us or try to prevent us from getting our manifestation not necessarily will unless we allow these obsessive thoughts to overtake our mind but ultimately the point is and the key is that we need to systematically and methodically come up with ways to target these beliefs and assumptions, these thoughts, these fears, these patterns, to remove them entirely, destroy them permanently, so that we're not using force to flip thoughts, catch and flip thoughts, right? What's the, what's the thing? It's affirm, affirm. If it's a bunch of nonsense, we have to go in and methodically, systematically, and laser focus, remove these beliefs so that we no longer have to obsessively be inundated with these fears, doubts, and insecurities, which cause a lot of problems. So that is the way that you can manifest a specific person. I have done this time and time again. Works all the time, but there's a lot of, you have to have dedication, you have to have control of mind a lot of times. Right? Or you have to be able to let go. You have to be able to stop imagining. You have to be able to stop obsessing. You have to be fearless and looking within if you want to take that route so that you can go in and change your reality and stop dealing with these problems that you've always dealt with. Because if you always think how you always thought, you'll always get what you've always got. And that's just the way that it is. So, But secondly, in the way that I have manifested the person that I am with now is a different way. It's a more broad approach through desperation and fear, pain from a prior relationship. And I'm talking about years ago. And I'm going to go into this more with the collaboration with this person who many have figured it out. But um, what I did was I created a perfect list of characteristics that would define my ideal partner. And through that, I th and I, I have yet, because I'm now located in England, my journals and this list itself reside in New Jersey right now. I need to get a hold of these so I can look at them. But it was, a, it was at least over 100 items that were painstakingly formulated in an exact approach to construct my perfect person. And over the course of days, weeks, months, and years, a bridge of incidents unfolded, not only for myself, but for my person as well which caused us to come together. And the way in which it happened is nothing short of absolutely miraculous. And so this is the way that I'm going to be delving into in upcoming videos, upcoming approaches, using and handing out techniques and the way to perceive these things to remove tons of resistance so that you do not have to suffer the same way as I have and how a lot of these coaches are teaching people to go through the process of manifesting a person which causes a lot of suffering, a lot of insecurity, a lot of doubt, and a lot of people aren't equipped to doing such a thing. You have to have a systematic approach. You have to have a regimented, structured approach if you want to go about dealing with all of these things that can be residing within the mind, right? A lot of problems, a lot of fears, a lot of doubts, insecurities, things like this, they have to be carefully gone through, right? This isn't a lackadaisical thing. We're talking about people's lives here. We're talking about heartache. We're talking about abandonment. We're talking about anxiety. We're talking about attachment issues, right? Many people have these issues to varying degrees, more or less. I was on the spectrum of advanced problems. This ruined my life for many, many years. However, going through, luckily for myself with dedication, I was not, and, and because I was inundated with a slew of other issues, it was really do or die for myself. Luckily for me, and luckily for those of you now who are watching me and who have gained something of value from my videos, I had used and developed and figured out these systematic approaches for the first respective approach, which is manifesting a specific person. That's what helped me to become who I am today. But 
also, and in contrast to that, how easy was it to construct characteristics of a perfect person and then set it down and then watch how the world has conspired with all aspects, all people, all thoughts, all experiences using people, you know, of lowly stature and highly stature, people in organizations or people just on the street have been used in perfect mastery who have been controlled with amazing craftsmanship who have been developed perfectly. I have conformed to the ideal person that will be ready for this person. And likewise, in the opposite direction, this person who I manifested had to become, if she was not already, she had to become the person that would fit my criteria. So this person was selected Hand selected, no doubt, to match all these very amazingly specific criteria that I wrote down in my time of despair, in my time of desire. And I was very anxious and I was very meticulous with my wording. I mean, exact, nuanced, so that there was no wiggle room that I would never manifest a person that I didn't want again. And in doing that, all resistance was removed because I put the pen down. It was the last page in my book. I closed it up. And listen, four years of life happened and some horrific events unfolded. I can't wait to go in with you. And a lot of you have already, you know, there's been um, a lot of events that have happened in my life over the past while, I mean, many of you know, you've been following my journey over the past four years, ever since, right? I've been in relationships, which means I wasn't just sitting around doing nothing. I was living my life perfectly, following bridges that I didn't even know were happening, which is happening all the time. And then ultimately, one fateful evening, I get together with this person whom you, a lot of you actually know. She's a manifestation coach. So I'm very excited to go into these details more specifically in the following videos. I will be talking a lot more about the general approach and crafting a perfect person so that you don't have to go in to have these horrific experiences that I have had. And then many people still are teaching these archaic ancient approaches that are causing tremendous amounts of issues in people's minds, victim blaming, saying you're not manifesting this person in a week, then you've done something wrong. Lately, I've been hearing things, what is it? People have been trying to manifest for five years and suddenly they affirm for a week and get their manifestation. Then they attribute all the success to that one week. What about the other 250 odd weeks and all that work that they've put in. So there's a lot of misinformation being taught by people who really shouldn't be teaching. There are a lot of people worth their salt. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of people that I respect and you'll be hearing about these. Um, I want to take you through the systematic ways to test this yourself again, because in the end, even for myself, I will be damned if I will take someone's word as truth without putting it to the test. That's what I did in the beginning when I was young, in my very early 20s. And this is something that he, I personally almost walked away from manifesting. Luckily for myself, I had a bunch of extremely powerful mystical experiences. I experienced the promise. I've had time frozen. I've had a lot of psychic visions, biblical visions. So these things helped me to stay, keep me in line. This was even way before I ever heard of who Neville Goddard was. This helped me to continue to manifest, continue to systematically test. And luckily for myself, I had someone, a mentor throughout my journey in the very beginning who told me to keep track of every single manifestation or prayer. He said, at that time, so on a rainy day, I can always reflect back. I can always see that my manifestations are real. And through that approach, I was able to debunk dozens of mainstream teachers, these nonsense that they teach. Essentially, once you get to a certain level and you begin to master this craft, you really hone in and start to really specifically, scientifically look at it, doing segmented tests. You, this is when you start to be able to chuck away and throw, burn all those nonsense teachings and you get very specific nuanced results. This is when you will master your craft. And so I wanna take you again through this journey. Make sure you're following along. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell icon. Make sure you hit the like button so that people who wouldn't normally be able to see this will see this. And also if you know someone who would benefit from these systematic approaches. If someone that you know likely would only listen to someone with a science background, someone who's, um, you know, has a, um, oh my goodness, 
my, my perception and ideas are always in alignment with what I was taught in university, which is mathematics, physics, and computer science. And if you know someone that would benefit from that, make sure you share this with them. But on that note, comment below with the experiences that you've had with manifesting specific people, those of you who have manifested through using my techniques, who, who have also had trouble with it, or people who have used general, please comment below. Also, aside from that, my um, lately talking with coaching clients, I have been getting a lot of questions related to this manifestation of my person. So as I said, I will be doing collaboration soon with her. Her and I will be talking about the ins and outs of how this all works, how what our perception was in this whole process, because we had two individualized perceptions, but each of them perfectly lined with each other to meet at the center point, which was amazing. Now we're in this amazing relationship. Um, aside from that, the last video that I made, which was on constructing imaginal acts, stay tuned in the future. So I go more delved into the specific nature of constructing techniques. So one of the features or things that I offer now is, um, sorry, custom imaginal scenes for people. I record them. I narrate them. Make sure you are following along to get more information on that. Also, there is a worksheet with this video. Be sure to download that worksheet so that you can implement, you can really utilize and implement the aspects here and master them in your life. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this. Stay tuned for next time. Stay tuned for updated um, calendar, updated schedule that I will be um, kind of giving out once things get kind of settled in here in um, London so that you can stay tuned for more. Thanks again.